Wiley the Deported Coyote. Things started to get pretty interesting. Unfortunately, the reasons to have travel insurance are nearly endless as well. He's discovering lots about himself, and he's spending a lot more time in the bathroom. This will be the high point of my day. Todd? That's Todd Todd Villa, bitch. Well, after uh, a few more days in uh, Rio Dulce, the, f the sun finally decided to show up and it was quite nice. Spent a couple of days uh, hanging out with a 60-year-old French-Canadian guy who's been sailing for about 40 years and uh, considered uh, going in with four or five of the people to buy his sailboat that he had on sale for 90% off and then started considering business offers and options and things like that, but uh, decided to come down to Honduras today. So this is the uh, third country on this trip. Easy border crossing, De dealing with money changers, things like that. So Keen and I are, or Adil and I, I always want to call you a Keen for some reason. Adil and I are headed up to Copan to uh, check out the ruins and uh, go from there. One thing from now on you're gonna notice is the hat's gone. And it was quite random today on the bus. The bus driver's little helper, the assistant guy, came back to my seat and said that the bus driver wanted to buy my hat. Asked me how much I wanted. So I told him twice as much as I paid for it. <laughs> Since I got a really good deal on it anyway, and I need a hat, I figured, well, uh, if he's willing to give me 50 bucks for that hat, 50 US, he can have it. Pretty good day so far, huh? The decision to sell that hat would haunt me for about two years. I have a weird relationship with hats. We decided to take our time walking around the city on the way to the hostel and saw some very interesting sights along the way. Some that were uncomfortably familiar for me. Once we found our way to the hostel, not only were we pleasantly surprised with how nice it was and how empty it was, but also with our lone companion in the dormitory, a really cool girl from Canada who seemed really happy to be around English speakers once again. She invited us out for dinner, and before long, well, if you're a regular Tanzillophile, streets of Copan Ruinas, perhaps you've noticed a bit of a theme developing. Oh, we're walking the streets in Honduras at night. Oh, oh my God! We're gonna get ass raped any minute now with a machete. <laughs> there were to be no asses raped with machetes or any other instruments that night. We've made our way to the namesake of Copan, the Copan archaeological site. As you can see, the Acropolis uh, behind me. This, th this place is a little bit different than, say, Palenque and Chichen Itza and uh, Tikal, in that it's known for its um, sculpture work, stonework, the carvings on some of these massive stones that are found all over the park. These guys. Here's a close-up of one of the carved pieces. Of course it's a man, probably a king of some sort. I don't know if you can see the paint still on the belt line up around the neck. It's about a thousand years old. Here's a pretty good look at the uh, Acropolis of Copan. One of the statues there, engravings, sculpture pieces. And also uh, behind one of these is a uh, fully uh, preserved temple that uh, was so sacred to the uh, people who lived here once upon a time that they saved it in its entirety and just built over it. And being a sports fan, one of my uh, favorite things of all of these sites is the, uh, the ball court, which is exactly right there, right behind me. If you've never Googled or never learned about the old Mayan sport of uh, just ball is what they called it. You should Google it and check it out. It was pretty, uh, it could get pretty brutal. The uh, ball court in Chichen Itza uh, was probably 10 or 20 times that size. And here's a view from the other end. Should have been an archaeologist. <laughs> God only knows what died on this thing. And this is the world-famous 
hieroglyphed staircase. 64 steps, 2,500 inscriptions. It's on the UNESCO World Heritage Site because it dictates about 400 years worth of history of the city. And thanks to the Spanish penchant for burning everything that didn't fall into the Jesus Christ propaganda mold, this is uh, unfortunately the only way we have to really know about Mayan history. So, yet another reason to perhaps smack a Christian next Sunday. This guy is one of the uh, more impressive glyphs here, and rightfully so, because he's the one responsible for that. And all of his predecessors are the ones that are lined up in the middle, ascending to heaven because they came before him. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a blank spot right in the middle there. And I believe that that was taken out of here and is in a museum in Boston, if I understood him correctly. I'm sort of eavesdropping on the tour guides, but uh, why the fuck would that be in, in Boston? I want one in my living room. See if you can make that happen, Adil. Even they knew of Todzilla X. Huh? It looks like a turtle. Yeah, there's a lot of turtles here. Yeah. So now we've climbed to the top of one of these temples. This is Cabeza de Anciano, the old man's head. I don't know Spanish, I'm just reading it off that sign. Hmm. Look like anyone we know? Be nice, fuckos. And this is the proper top of the staircase, which is right there. And this is the actual Acropolis. And this is a place that none of us, presumably, unless you're watching this, Mr. Obama, none of us would ever, 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 upon penalty of death, find ourselves up here. This is just for the social elite, the kings. They were the only ones privileged enough to get that kind of view of Copan. And then there's much more, all the way across the plaza over there, another temple back there, and not a guardrail to be found in the place. What'll happen if you fall? Will you sue? <laughs> and this is sort of the perimeter, I guess, of the city. One big wall. Holy Christ, I didn't know that. Surrounding jungle. Monkey or two out there. I came to Copan thinking that it was just going to be the Estellas, the sculpture work, the engravings, things like that, and it's fucking fantastic. There's a lot more to it. The structures are great. It's on par, I think, with uh, Tony Na. It's up there with Palenque, and that you can kind of climb on everything. It's got the buried temple you can pay for if you want to go see it. You want to dig through the tunnels or climb through the tunnels archaeologists put up. It's cool, man. Even if you're not into engravings and uh, sculptures and things like that, well worth the uh, 300 limpiras. Is that what it is? Limpiras? Yeah. Limpies. That's what I heard them called yesterday. Limps. Limps. <laughs> Limps for you old fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Definitely recommend Copan. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> That's my spot on the road. Whoa. Is it going? I got a little bit of it. Oh. It's a trip. Oh, you're one of the top of yours. Hi there. He's like in the meat. I didn't even see him. Speak or something. Don't you shit on me. Come here. You keep on. He comes here. down here to you, he's gonna chew your nose off. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the setting and the atmosphere, reminders of where we were were never far away. And the next morning, we were up before sunrise, 
had an early bus to catch from Copan to what some people call the murder capital of the world, San Pedro Sola, Honduras. Now we weren't going to San Pedro to see the sights. Oh no. <laughs> it was there that we had to catch another connection. This one to the coastal city of La Ceiba, because it's from La Ceiba that you catch the ferries to the world famous Bay Islands, Utila and Roatan. We had a few hours to kill before the next ferry. That was spent trying to find food and watching soccer, of all things. It's Real Madrid versus Barcelona today. And that's one of the only TVs I can find. When it was finally time to hop aboard the ferry, I was thrilled. I was finally, finally, going to get some real sun, some real surf, some real Caribbean fun. Nominated for the worst job in the world, cute picker-upper on a ferry. The biggest concern that I had was that my expectations were so high at this point that there was no way the reality of Roatan could measure up. But I can tell you this, I was also thinking that if this ferry ride was any indication of what was waiting for me on Roatan, I was going to be just fine. And just fine, I most certainly was. Roatan, Honduras. Tells me I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, played some softball. Knocked a woman out with a home run. Literally. That if I could figure out how to make money, I may vanish here. Thank <laughs> you. 